Welcome ladies and gentlemen, and today we are going to begin our next playthrough. I'm going to be taking a break from the typical games that I play to show you one of my favorite games of all time, which is Phantasmagoria. Now this game was released in 1995 by Sierra, who at the time was one of the biggest uh, adventure game uh, companies out there. So this was actually one of their more popular titles. So let's take a look and see exactly why that is. Good morning, honey. Good morning, sweetheart. How about some coffee? Yeah, big one. Somebody kept me up last night. Well, I'm sorry I had a nightmare. You didn't seem to mind so much last night. Oh, no. <laughs> it was probably just spending the night in a new house is all. Yeah, I know. We have to admit, this place is kind of strange. Yeah, it's different. You know, I bet the guy that built this place must have been really bizarre. Well, hi, Spaz. How you doing, huh? Hmm. What are you going to do today, sweetheart? Well, I don't know. I'm almost finished unpacking. Thought maybe I'd do a little exploring. Yeah. How about you? Do you see that bathroom yet on the second floor? Yeah. I like that. I think I'm going to turn it into a photo lab for myself. Keep me busy for a week or so. That's a good idea. What's in that box? Well, I don't know. I haven't gone through it yet. Let's see. Oh, it's Christmas ornament. Oh, look at this. Why? Just a sec. You remember this? Yeah. Yeah, I gave you this for Halloween. Congrats. <laughs> you know it was Christmas Eve. It was the night you proposed to me. Are you sure I proposed to you? Yes. Of course I remember. Of course I do. You're forgiven. I better get to work. I got a lot to do. I'm gonna keep this little fella with me, though. So I'll always remember that fateful night. <laughs> Well, don't wait too hard. See you later. Sounds like she actually says, don't wait too hard. But anyway, that is Adrian. She is an author, and Don is her husband, and he is a photographer, as you may have guessed. So anyway, this is an old-style adventure game, but it's not as old-style as the ones where you gotta actually type in what you wanna do. I can't stand those games, so that's why I'm not gonna play any ever. I find that they're even more boring than these ones are. So anyway, just a quick rundown of the interface here. The P brings up your menu, and you can see here most of it revolves around saving and getting back into the game. So restore, save, play, quit. Full screen is for the FMVs. Uncensored is for the uh, profanity, which there's not all that much of it, so it's not really a big deal. The progress meter you saw at the top is not necessarily even for every chapter, so some are longer than others. Um, inventory, eight slots. This icon right here, if you're in the middle of something, you click it, it skips it. This is the examine function, so an item in your inventory, you drag it over it, it pops up a little box and you can look at it. This is the hint keeper, if you click on him. I am the official oh, hint Oh, I'm keeper. sorry, the official hint keeper. I watch keeper. your every move. Ask me for a hint if you are hopelessly stuck, but use me sparingly. Too many hints can spoil the game. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> There's an audio bug there. It made me laugh. I almost choked on my coffee. Um, anyway, the cursor here is normally yellow. When it turns either an arrow, that means you can go into a particular place, or when it turns red, you can interact with a particular object. So stop yawning and go over there and go in this drawer. 
Uh, there is a book of matches in here that we are going to take. Now, I'm going to try to do this playthrough without messing around too much with totally, totally optional things that don't impact the story at all. You can wash your hands and you can get something out of the refrigerator in terms of, like, eating something, but you can't actually take it, so... Head over to the fireplace here. It's a nice fake-looking fire. And take the poker. And you can look at this uh, painting here, who is somebody we won't know because they lived here before we did. Why it's still hanging there and it wasn't removed, I don't know. I would That's the first thing I would do, is remove personal, personal effects from this place. Now, mirrors in this game are funny. Funny things, these mirrors. They always show you things that aren't there when you look at them with your own eyes. And later on, mirrors reveal a lot of truth about what's happened in this place previously. But for the time being, we can see that there is something wrong with this picture. They do not match. And it also looks like Frankenstein standing in the doorway there, but I don't know if that's supposed to be like that or not. It doesn't really look the same to me when I look at it like this, although I guess you could kind of see that there might be an outline there. Anyway, this leads into the main hall. I wish I had a main hall this big. I mean, you know, like, my entire house would fit in this one main hall. It's pretty crazy. And they have a bar right in the main hall. Nothing to sit on, but they got a bar. <laughs> This would be, uh, I guess, if you, you had guests over, you just say, look, just stand there. And uh, we want to take a look at one bottle in particular, which is a bottle of absinthe. And I'm not 100% familiar with uh, it or its alcohol content. But I do vaguely remember my brother saying that it's not good for you. What is this? It's the essence of wormwood. Absinthe. Oh well, I guess. It'll come in handy later on. We'll, we'll get to look at it a little bit more. We also have our own fortune teller booth thing. What the hell is that? Yeah, what, what the hell is that? Alright. A token. I'll tell you what it is. You know what this is? It's one creepy bitch is what this is. Look at that eyes glowing. Just no, not gonna happen. He'll be out in the back with the rest of the firewood. Even if its eyes weren't glowing, it's still creepy. And if it gave me a message like this, I would definitely be it. Evil will walk once more. Imagine if you got that in a fortune cookie. I'd be going back to that restaurant. Alright, so we find out that this thing is weird. Mirrors are weird. And this is just the first floor. Let's go upstairs. Yeah, I'm sure there's good stuff here. And you got some woman squatting and taking a shit in the corner there. I don't know what, what kind of statue that is. But that's exactly what it looked like it was doing. So, I don't know. It's just a little too strange for me. So, let's go uh, in this room on the right here. This is the guest bedroom. And on the dresser here is a deck of tarot cards. Why that's important, I don't know. But it is. I know what they're for, but they will not be used for quite some time. And uh, you know, it's actually just puts everything like in her pants or some invisible pouch. Even the poker, she just stuffs it down her pants and is like, hey. There's another painting of somebody we don't know. This is Maria, though. I do know her name. Yeah, and that's the painting. So let's stop looking at it like we're special and head over to the vanity here. And so let's find out what's going on. One of the things I always loved about this game is you always find, or in games in general, you always find letters and stuff that are never delivered to the person they're addressed to. My dearest Gaston, I can't wait to see you, my angel. It's been far too long. Let's, Let's take, take a few, few moments, moments for ourselves during Zoltan's party next week. 
We'll meet in the gazebo, away from all the revelry. Angel, how I yearn for your sweet kiss. Your strong arms holding me tight. Protect me. And oh, my dear, I need protecting. I'm afraid my husband's beginning to suspect. He watches me night and day. Perhaps we can steal away, run away, forever from his sight. My only consolation is thoughts of you, my angel. Always, your adoring love, Marie.